Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to our Outdoors channel. This video is about RC vehicles and covers the Lane Boys RC wiring kit for wiring up RC cars and trucks for realism. You get headlights, taillights, turn signals, brake lights, pack up lights, 4x flashers and more. Now this is an in-depth look at this modification to RC vehicles. This is not a DIY kit that is just plug and play. It's not real difficult, but it requires learning some techniques such as testing and soldering electrical parts. If you have done any work with your RC vehicle, such as with your batteries, you can probably handle this. In this, you will learn not only putting this together, but also techniques on how to do repairs. You'll learn how to salvage wire and parts from other RCs and other sources for reuse and repairs. This is a series of videos in three parts. Part one was on wiring and soldering. Part two is mounting and testing lights in the body. Part three is adding the light board and programming it at your computer. Now this video is part three, adding the light board and programming it at your computer. And this is the final video in this series. Now this part is perhaps the most fun part. This finalizes getting the lights installed and connected and then programming the light controller at your computer via a simple USB connection. Now be sure to give us a like and hit that thumbs up icon and share it with your family, friends, and fellow RC enthusiasts. Please comment and tell us what you would like to see, any questions you may have, and your ideas. So let's get started with this now. Okay, got the front uh lights all soldered in. Uh, it was very hard to try and get a shot of actual soldering but it's pretty much just tin the wire, tin the pad and then touch them together well, with heat and they solder on. Just want to make sure you have good solder joints so they're tough so they ain't gonna go anywhere. Notice I kept all the wires semi-organized that way they just mount into the truck a whole lot easier duct tape is wonders for holding stuff in bodies. Just make sure your body is clean before you use it, otherwise it doesn't stick too well. So we've got the front lights all coming between channels 1 and 9. And like I said earlier, I skip every other channel. You can use every channel. Uh, but I tend to do it every other just to make the soldering a little easier. Uh, so the rear is going to be on sections or channels 11 let's see be 11 13 15 Ooh, and I may have to get two together in order to get both tail lights and the backup lights on there but uh, I can get them all together so it'll probably be 11 maybe 12 since there's a right angle there and go 14 16 We'll see what happens and I'll show you what that looks like all soldered together and then we'll mount this actual board. We'll uh, show you the programming and that should be a full working unit then. Alrighty, now we got the all, all the rear wired in. Uh, as you can see I've got every other port going around that guy. So I will make a wiring diagram of what all the wires are and what channel they are going to. That way it'll make it easier to the program, uh, and you'll get that uh, <laughs> when I uh, explain the programming. As you can see, all the wiring is in. I will zip tie it up and tuck it in. One thing I did do odd is I've got an extra uh, female, or technically male, uh, servo end. This is going to attach roughly the center of the truck, and it connects to the trailers that I've built. That way, my trailers, got a car hauling trailer that I made, and it's got working tail lights. I'll show them all working too uh, once it's all done. But after this, it's all soldered up. The next thing to do is program it and see if that part works. So now that we got this wired up, uh, we got all of our wires soldered on, run. 
Uh, one thing I did do differently from the Toyota, if you ever saw that video, is I wired an onboard switch instead of a third channel. So I got a couple of wires coming up to this push button switch. will operate the same way as the third channel did on my uh, Toyota. Just it's on the truck instead of on the radio. Uh, so I've got all these labeled and onto here so I know what channels are controlling what and we use that to run the profile and make the profile in the computer so next thing we do we want to go to github.com forward slash laneboys rc forward slash rc dash light dash controller bring into this menu uh, we're working with the mark 4 version so we'll go into there and we need to go into the download and we will download this file. What that file will bring you to and download is this is the file. So you place that wherever you need to on your desktop and whatever file format you want to keep yourself organized. Uh, you'll open that up and you can go into the README. It'll give you oh, and open that up and you want to open up the ISP Windows, ISP Windows again, and if I remember correctly, you want to run the application file, which is the IC81 ISP. You would extract it or run it. If you extract it, you'll have to install, but you can just straight run it. That'll install the program that you use. This will be the icon for the program and that is what takes the information from the website that you download for your specific profile and programs it onto the light controller through this switch or through this uh, adapter and then we'll go through all of that and make it simple as we can so once you got that program downloaded time to make a configuration you want to go to laneboys.github.io forward slash rc dash light dash controller bring you up to the screen this is the same version i have it's just the board was printed on the green for his picture here he's now printing them on black or i think he goes back and forth depending on what he can get uh so make sure you just have matching hardware uh, I am a little bit unfamiliar with this uh, new format. He just changed it. So, but it looks fairly, looks everything looks fairly much like uh, it did before, just a better layout. So you want to make sure your operating mode is correct. Uh, I'm using just one, so it's a master preprocessor and preprocessor input. Preprocessor is the unit that's uh, next to the receiver. And then that is the master controller. Uh, if you do have more than one light controller, which I have not experimented with, you can set one as the master and one as a uh, slave. And there's probably all kinds of different options that I don't even know about yet. So, next thing, ESC type. Uh, depending on what kind of car you're running, uh, you have option for forward brake and reverse without timeout. Uh, forward brake and reverse uh, with no timeout, uh, forward reverse crawler mode, which is what I use, so it doesn't have a brakes function, or if you're running a race car, you have forward and brake and no reverse. So select the option that applies to the vehicle you're running. Then we go to the channel 3 auxiliary configuration. Uh, this will depend on the type of uh, radio you have. If you have a two position switch controlling your third channel, two position switch with the up and down buttons, momentary push button, that's the one that I have on the Toyota for the light control, or controlling the lights on the radio itself. This one, I like I said, has the push button on the light controller, not on the radio. So I have that one selected. Then we go to the output functions. I'm not using any servo output, so I we'll get to skip that. You can use it to move the steering wheel inside your cab uh, or use it to select your two-speed gearbox. Uh, another thing you can do, and you can set this for up to three gears. So, 
if you have a three-speed gearbox, you can control it through this controller. Uh, output function, this is uh, more or less for uh, if you have a second uh, controller, which would be the slave output, or out to a preprocess for another controller after that, or a winch output. I haven't experimented with any of that, but I might at some point with the winch output. We'll see how that goes. Then we get into the bread and butter of it, the LED configuration. I've already got this programmed for what I am uh, got it figured out for. So if you look at the list, uh, I got number one is headlights. So we look up here and number one, this is the light channel. I have, uh, and this is basically what channel on the light board you have. 1 through 16, or 1 through 15, so or 0 through 15, so you have 16 channels. Uh, and these are your positions. So, always on, as soon as you power it up, it, that uh, whatever light position you put there would be always on. 0, uh, from what I experienced, seems to do the same thing. I'm not sure why, but he has that for two positions, but he does. But there's enough click positions that you don't have to worry about it. So position one, so that's the first click. Uh, I have that coming on as all of the running lights. And if you notice, I have the rear lights. And let's see. And then the front lights all coming on at 33%. Pretty much all of these values are either off, 33%, 60%, or 50% is same 60, and then 100%. And kind of get three or four different light levels, so to speak. It doesn't do it in actual 100 uh, increments, but it'll be reasonably close. <laughs> uh, so, off the when it first starts up, it's always on and zero seems to match that. So first click, I have all my running lights coming on. Second click, I have the headlights along with the running lights, and you have to put the running lights in again uh, for each or for each LED, what positions you want them on for. Uh, uh, number three, it's all the same. And actually, it looks like I'm missing some of the running lights on here. So we'll click into it. We will take 33 because we don't want those to change. And 33 and 33. So that way they all run the same all the way through. Uh, also, I do have the headlights going to 100% and on click two, it's 50. So you have low beam and high beam. Kind of a neat way to make it a little more scale. And like with the Toyota, I think I go out to seven clicks with that one for all the different options. So, uh, as we go through, so headlights we have on click two at 50% and click three for 100%. So they got the low and high beam on the headlight. Now, position number three is the left turn at markers. So I have it coming on as the marker continue as the marker with the low and high beam, and then we go all the way over to uh, here. Granted, in, on the vehicle it's left. I found out that uh, it was turning on with the wrong direction, so it's reversed in my case uh, for which way the servo was going, so it's recognizing it as right. But So the controller thinks it's right. It's flashing on the left side of the vehicle and uh, I'm turning my uh, controller to the left, so it all matches up. So, at that point I knew everything had to be reversed left, right for my uh, application here. So, uh, got that 100% for the turn signal, because we want that nice and bright. Now we come down to channel four, that's gonna be the right turn signal, and these are both the front, three and four are the fronts. So again, 50%, 50%, 50% for to come on through the headlights. Big difference on this one is we have 100% on the left. And something you'll notice is both of these, they stay 50% unless the certain signals are on. That way they can stay dimly lit for running lights, but will flash for the turn signals. And then 
five. We actually didn't use, I just have dead numbers in there. Okay, not a big deal. Uh, number seven. Seven is the rear brake turn and marker. So we have those again, just like the marker lights above for the front, through the uh, running lights, low beam, high beam. But these are also running brake. Brake we do want to light up at 100% and also the turn signal at 100%. And then we go down to 8. 8 is actually only one function, it's the reverse lights. So it stays blank through all of that. We just put it in the reverse light column. And you can put multiple positions in for any of these things. Uh, so if we wanted another light to go on with the reverse, like you wanted a, a flood light for the reverse, you could add that. Uh, number nine is simply the right rear tail light setup. And all these functions are functioning off of one LED bulb for all of these. Except for the headlights, that's in tandem. Uh, that's the only one that's two bulbs in one channel. Alrighty, so next, what you would do is, uh, oh, lighting programs, if you are good at programming. Uh, I'm not sure how to program this, but it works good. <laughs> uh, advanced settings is a lot of stuff I don't understand and haven't needed to mess with, so I leave it alone. Uh, so once you have all that, and we'll go back to the configuration. This is usually where I end. I don't mess with much else. Uh, you'll want to save your configuration. You'll want to label it for your vehicle. Uh, mine was, I believe it was blazer with button. Uh, you can label it whatever you like. Uh, but I would make it a unique file name for whatever you're doing. So you'll save the dot text. You'll hit OK and download it. I'm going to cancel it because I don't want to save over anything that I have for it. But I did label it Blazor in, uh, on my computer. So you save that. And you also want to save it in firmware version. And you do the same here. Give it a custom name. Make sure you keep the .hex afterwards or the .hex. Otherwise, the programmer will not uh, be able to pick it up. So go ahead and save that. And what you can do is show it in the folder, at least how I do it, and I would copy it. Actually, I usually cut it so that way I don't have multiples there. And I'll minimize these two, come into my RC lighting, and this is where I would save it. And I'd paste it in, and it comes up as the hex file. I got the blazer button on body dot hex. So that's the one I was just looking at on the website and it was loaded from my computer in there. You can load them from your computer back into there, modify what you have there so you can do step by step and get things figured out. Go back and forth, just make sure you create a unique name. And if you make a bunch of them, like you'll notice my Toyota has many, many uh, hex files. That was a lot of experimentation and I wanted to know where I was at and how I was making my progress. So I had many different names on that one. Uh, but the blazer, I only had two, the initial, which was before I realized the left and right turn signals were reversed. And then once I got the body on the, or got that corrected and put the body, uh, the button on the body, then I made that one. That's my final one. So next thing you do is you'll fire up this program. And this guy looks just like this. If the you'll want to select your file. In this case we're doing the blazer on button and you have to have that dot hex in there like I said earlier otherwise this program will not see it. So we would open that and it'll load up and something I will, uh, a trick that, uh, or a trick I don't know what you want to call it, but something I noticed before uh, it only comes up as COM1 but we do not have this guy plugged into the computer yet. So if you look at that, and I've had it come up as COM2 and COM4, and I think one time was COM3. So you want to see which one it pops up with. So we have it on COM1, and that's the only one showing. We'll plug this guy into the USB. And this guy 
that goes into the board. Make sure you go in the right direction. And you heard the beep of the computer. And now we have COM3. So COM3 is the one we want to program through. Next, we take the Barsi body. We need to unplug both of these. On my other one, this plug does not exist, so we'll unplug that. And unplug this guy. And this is the one that goes down to the receiver. We want to line up. We have a tag on this guy. It says ISP and TX, RX, and all that plus minus. Want to match it up with the labeling on the chip. So we'll slide that in like that. And if my big fingers want to work, there we go. Slides in just like that. If you want, you can watch the little itty bitty LEDs flash and you know it's programming, but you don't have to. So once you get that plugged in, you get your COM selected, you got your file selected, you tap program, and she will flash. Stop flashing, it says done, program successfully. And it's done. That's all there is to programming it. So all we gotta do, unplug here. Replug this guy, making sure negative is on the bottom with that and signal is on the top. This guy I've got configured so it's on the center spot. So doesn't matter if I plug this one in this way or this way. It will work. Now all I'm gonna do is connect this end to my receiver end and everything should work. Plugs plugged into the receiver end. Uh, got all our colors matching so we know our polarity is right. So now, set it on, yeah, we'll pin it on, but it looks pretty good, I think. And now we'll grab the controller and see how all the lights work. The controller out. We are going to turn on the ESC. First, we've got to turn on our radio. Radio is on first. And I'm doing this handheld because the battery died, but I wanted to get the video done. So I have a USB cable for power. Ah, let's see, so we'll turn on our ESC. Oop. Helps a lot to have a battery plugged in. Now we got everything plugged in between the body and the ESC here. Got a battery in it, that'll help. Set the body on. We'll just do a loose fit just, just to get it on there. So we got our transmitter on. And turn on the ESC. And there we go. Hopefully everything works. Our button is up underneath the fender on the passenger side, if I remember right. There it is. So, click the button once, and we can see all the tail lights come on. All the marker lights, that's that first click position. Hopefully, let's try turning off the lights. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see them better. So, first click. Second click turns up. Oop, I lost a headlight. There we go. I must have a loose wire in there. I'll have to get in there and reset that. So there's the second position. So all the, uh, that'd be your low beam. And one more click will give us a high beam. There we go. And one, there is no more clicks, so a double click, low beam. One more double click will turn off the headlights. One more double click will turn off the running lights. And if we click it four times, it'll turn on the hazards. And another four clicks to turn them off. Now, we will turn the wheels to the right. And you see the right turn signal turns on. Let it center. They will turn off. Turn to the right. Or, no, that'd be the left. 
<laughs> it's looking right to me because it's facing the vehicle. That turn signal turns up. Now, we'll turn this guy around. And we'll see what the taillights are doing. So, got the one click for the taillights. We roll forward a little bit. Brake lights come on. Roll backwards, reverse lights come on. And then the brake lights again. So everything is working good. Uh, I did end up with a problem with the trailer, so it kind of got wrecked <laughs> when the grandson was running it. So I can't demonstrate the tail lights on that. But there's my plug for my trailer lights. And I do have a hitch there. So, but well, maybe I'll upload another video of that and the build of the trailer. But for now, that's all for that, and it all works good. Okay, this is the end of part three, adding the light board and programming it at your computer. Now this is the final part in this series. See the links in the description below for parts one and two. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some inspiration about adding some lights to your RC vehicle. If you did, please give us a like and hit that thumbs up icon. And share this with your family, friends, and fellow RC enthusiasts. Please give us your comments on what you would like to see, any questions you may have, and what ideas you can share with us. And please subscribe and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything new. Thank you.